Action surge! Whoa! It's happening Whoa. now. It's real. We oh have my. miraculously spawned <laughs> Rosé <laughs> 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 in. We need it. It's important. So, um... That was, that was a big yeah. episode. Yeah, yeah, a lot happened. We were I mean, going. it started big and then it just kept going. Yeah, yeah. Um, so should we start at the beginning? or I mean, or do you want to start where we ended? I think we might have to start. I think we might have to go backwards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. let's go backwards. I think we have to go backwards. So, um, Gronoth. My Papa. Oh. Papa Gronoth. What a terrible way to go. Yeah. I mean... No, none of us have any way of like getting over. None of us are healers. No, well, I am, but I'm yeah, a cat but, but presently. <laughs> 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 and I haven't seen it. I'm, I'm, I'm watching Dolly. I was gonna because I saw Dolly. I was gonna go. You want to go terrorize someone? Well, I'm, yeah, but I don't know that. But I, yeah, I did. Want but to yeah, go yeah, 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 yeah. In the heart of hearts. I, I, obviously, I had that up my sleeve. Um, the, and that twenty was the only thing that ended the session there. Ooh. Because I, cause that's why I was like, are you moving back towards the... Yeah. So you start to turn around moving back. You get to building three, and you rolled a nat 20. I was going to have you roll perception checks. Then it's Brynhildr and the guard's turn. Then and then Delian. Then Kel. And I was like, Kel is really close now and is a cat. <laughs> like, Kel will, Kel will see this. And I quite yeah. like the idea of it only a cat witnessing <laughs> this moment. The only person who... I mean, Kel, you will have seen this. Okay. Um, and I would say... Dolly would have had a reasonable chance of if you're heading back yeah, in that I direction. I did, like, because there was at one point, and it wasn't for a while, but, like, there was at one point I was like, wait, who's with Gronoff right now? And then and then mm. I was thinking backwards to, but wait, why would, why, why these empty houses? Why are we setting these up? And then I was like, no, surely not. But, yeah. So does that, so what, what's your hypothesis? That that was a distraction. That we mm. we were we were sent there solely to draw out the guards, yeah. so right. that yeah. Gronoff was, it was un- a un- unprotected. Yeah, which is exactly what happened. Yeah, hundred percent. And then the fact that we found out, Radiant found out that the <coughs> reason we had these houses have been unbuilt, remain unbuilt, is because for a period of time, an extended period of time, no one's been paying for them to be built, which suggests that. This isn't just a kind of, I don't know, it feels like there's some sort of plan in action there. There's some sort of, that, that's been well, just, in the works for a little bit. Well, just purely thinking about, like, why the hell would the, why would the spinner uh, slash the spider prince care about some unpaid debt? Like, mm. yeah. what, what is I that even wrote, I even wrote in my book, great, now we're debt collectors. Right. Like, <laughs> I was like, great, love that for us. And like, he literally, the, the spinner literally said it doesn't involve gods, like dead gods and stuff like that as we left. He literally said to your face, this one doesn't involve... Technically. Yeah, I mean, it didn't, I guess. Yeah. I mean, you know, obviously, I... I, 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 Mm. It's not about whether... I'm not going to reveal whether or not you, you might be right. You might be completely wrong. Um, we could be, yeah. We, I mean, there is, there is another hypothesis, which is this has nothing to do... Well, okay, so... <laughs> You've got the web. The web have their fingers in every single pie. I imagine it would it wouldn't be a stretch to think that the web was in some way involved with this this cloaked group of individuals who've been defacing stuff in Baroon. That would be kind of crazy to think that someone as powerful as the Spider Prince wouldn't be aware of this group of people. So maybe there is some sort of like you know elaborate plot where everything's kind of connected, mm. and that. Um, you know how do you how do you keep things quiet? Um, so th- that could be it that we were kind of like caught up in that plot, and that in fact the person who came isn't a member of the web. Well, it is a member of the web, but it's also a member of this crazy, dangerous group. Maybe because I haven't. I mean, I didn't actually. Dis- I don't think I described the look of that person. I think there are certain things that <clears throat> in my head, even a nat twenty kind of yeah. when something that big is happening and you're watching someone be killed. And I will. I will say. <clears throat> Even if you can cast healing word, mechanically Gronoth is gone. Yeah, he's dead. Um, and I sort of covered my back a little bit on that one by having them be stabbed multiple times, because the, 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 the Gronoth has been an, the antiqua in general. These kind of aging things is is tricky because they started off in session one. And I was like, mechanically they're level twenty clerics, but as their powers have faded. The way I think about Gronoth is that he has mechanically been de-leveling and de-leveling and de-leveling. Mm. So he would, ne- you know, he might now be a level 
two cleric or a level three cleric, but do you know what I mean? And yeah. th- 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 that's that's kind of what's happened. Um, and on a technical, mechanical level, if there is a first stab that brings him down to zero HP and a second stab, because it's within melee range and he's at zero HP, it's a critical Crit, hit, yeah. which means two it death is. saving fails, and then the next one would be a further two death saving fails, and he only needs three to be dead forever. So, mm. you know, he's, gone. he's um, yeah, he's probably gone. What was it the spider prince said about something about Baroon and the web? Um, mm. the, the spider prince sort of said that that the that the web have interests, essentially business interests in Baroon. Yeah. Um, Mm, and that they yeah. had, he sort of implied that they'd been financing the expansion of the city. Yeah. But and the people a, then stopped paying. Yeah, but it is a weird one, though, isn't it? Because, <coughs> you know, a bank that loans money doesn't burn the house down if if the owner doesn't pay their loan. But the ma- they, but they the ma- take ma- over the, the ma- house. But the mafia might. Yeah. Mm. Is there, well, yeah, then yeah. The, the, the web is not a bank. The web is a gang. Yeah. So if you if you think about it more in a kind of mafia or yakuza kind of style organization, that absolutely we can fund this for you. But if the, if you stop paying us and if you don't make deadlines that we have agreed on with you, then there are going to be consequences. Or additionally, if they spy an opportunity that's greater than all of that, they can afford to lose a few houses and start again mm-hmm. afterwards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. There there is totally the the. There is totally the possibility here that this is just an unbelievably unfortunate circumstance and we have been sent to do something which is to send a message to some rich like yuppies mm. and the, the, the web are like, all right, fair play, you don't want to pay up, we'll burn it all down. And it just so happens that it has, has taken place in this moment or there was simply someone who was waiting for an opportunity and we happened to accidentally provide them one. There is that as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I had a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> good. You did. That was really yeah. good. Oh, yeah. good. I had a lot of fun. Because that's, um, that's mechanically the most complicated thing I've planned. That's much more complicated than the action, than the action surge, than wow. the landslide. Because mm. the landslide, <coughs> unless you do things like, I don't know, off the top of my head, tie each other together with rope, <laughs> you're only really moving in one direction. Mm. And it's just it's just a simple countdown, whereas this has kind of lateral movement yeah. and vertical Did movement. Did you expect us to split up? Yes. Yeah. That's what, I mean... To that extent? Yeah, I thought you'd try. And f- I thought you'd try a building each. Yeah. yeah. Um, so essentially, um, I can kind of let you in on, and for people at home who might be interested, because some people have asked for the mechanics for the uh, landslide, yeah. which I will do at some point. Um, <clears throat> and essentially, this you have you have five buildings. The your oh, so this is fun. The guy, what you weren't aware of when you first went up to the plaza and you were staking everything out. The DC for a stealth check was ten, and every time you failed a stealth check, that DC increased by one. So every time you made a noise, it got harder and harder to hide. Mm-hmm. And that was my way of kind of representing the fact that the guards are mm-hmm. gradually paying more and more attention. So by the time we got to a point where your, st- your stealth check um, on building one was always plus five because you're so close to the walls. Mm-hmm. Your stealth check on um, building five. So by the end, we got to a place where to stealth around building one was 19. <sighs> It was 14 on 2, 13 on 3, 12 on 4, and 11 on 5. Now, I'm sure people are now going to go, hang on, you did something wrong then in the thing. Well, in the, I've opened myself to criticism. <laughs> but, but So that was what that was all about. And then behind, I was rolling a d6. And with every round, it became more and more likely as the buildings burned more that Brynhilda and the guards would get involved. Mm-hmm. On round mm-hmm. one, I had to roll a 1 on a d6. On round two, I had to roll a one or a two. And that's, in fact, when they started to take notice. And then they came out on round three because I rolled a one, two, or three. And it was sort of like two failures mean they like that they start to really kind of come out. Um, it's interesting. By that, by that, let's just say, just to kind of take some narrative into the mechanics of it, you yeah. built, if, if it is the case that we needed to leave Gronoth untended to, uh, based on your mechanics, it's implying that the web expected us to fuck up mm-hmm. because um, they they wanted us to make noise and be clumsy and do bad things, well, so it would draw the guards out. And we're shit. To yeah, like we are shit. Real. And it's quite nice, actually. You built a mechanic around the fact that, like, actually us failing at doing our job and making noise, and obviously mm-hmm. the more noise you make, the you know 
burn a building down, they're eventually going to come out. But it's it's kind of mm. quite mechanically interesting mm-hmm. to think that it's based around our ineptitude. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I, and again, it's we're still at a stage where setting DC for things is isn't that easy, you know, because we have. You know, you had some bad roles in there. Everyone had bad roles there. Not Holly everyone. really struggled. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was mostly us two. Well, Holly, um, Holly really no, I had a really bad day. Really bad but, day. But Carol had, you had some really bad stuff. I mean, you I had didn't. a really bad stealth role at the beginning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I Which, knocked over a like pile yeah. of lumber. That was yeah. on that one, that one. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, mm. there was, was just like nothing you could do. Because I think your stealth is like... We had a couple plus of three. Plus three. Not to look at your thing. I had a plus three. I had that one. Yeah, you had a plus three. Yeah, yeah. But I also think that... You know, those me. those two guards that the fact that Gronoth was unattended doesn't necessarily mean that there are only two guards and Brynhilda in the entire yeah, building. Yeah. It's just, you know, he's the antiquary, he can go where he wants. Mm. Um I think he probably has a lot he has a larger guard retinue than two guards, but and he also has a household, he'd have cooks and valets yeah. and all this kind of stuff. Mm. But um but yeah, so and then and then the the collapse mechanics was um so the the, the buildings were losing ten HP per round. Uh, how much HP did they have in total? So, the first, so they were different ones. depending on yeah. how many stories they had. So the first building had fi- had 80 HP. The second one had 100. The third one had a 120. The fourth one had 120. And the fifth one had 140. Um, uh, and in the, base, in the basement of um, building four was a wine cellar. Oh. That you could have used. God as, damn it! Ah, oh, per I should have gone to <laughs> um, should have gone to house number four. Uh, uh, but the and that and that tower that you saw was a bell tower, and if the bell tower had collapsed, it would have brought everyone's attention down to the fifth building, Clang. which could have been useful for you, yeah. um, potentially. And I, but I, I didn't know how much you'd be able to use that. So they're losing ten HP <coughs> per round. If you'd done something that I thought was really smart, um, that was doubled. Essentially, if you'd really got that fire established, and then at fifty HP, they start. We start this collapse mechanic every round, and it's a D twelve, and on a ten to a twelve, the building just collapses. Yeah. On a seven to a nine, part of the building collapses into its neighbor and does additional damage to the neighbor. Mm-hmm. Um, on a four to a six, part of the building collapses and blocks your path, so you can't move that round. No one got that. Um, and then on a one to a three, a section of the building or scaffolding around it drops. Um, and you have a dexterity saving throw, you take some bludgeoning damage and some fire damage. Um, um, one thing, I mean, so was it, Kel, did you start the first fire? Was it <coughs> right? No, 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 it was you actually Donnie yeah, started the trellis. Donnie started, yeah, because yeah, you just couldn't the climb balconies. I'm not, like, I, strength and, and all that are, are not her forte. So the climb, like, climb checks are quite difficult to DM, I think, yeah. because you don't actually have to call for an athletics check. So, for example, I wouldn't call for an athletics check if you wanted to climb over a, mm. a gate because I think they've got, like, a portcullis because they've got handholds mm. in them. But the, the the rules are that as soon as it's at you the DM's discretion whether or not I choose to, uh, choose to ask you to do it. And I feel like going up kind of marble or sandstone buildings it, that are oh, the newly constructed are really hard to I also just feel like one failure for her would have been acceptable but having fallen off twice she just would have went fuck, fuck it, it. Like, just, just yeah, that's that's I don't think anyone I think that's a vibe that you just would have been like that's that. enough I was <laughs> fully thinking right we're, go- we're each going to go we're going to scout we're going to find stuff inside we're going to come back we're going to go right that's once, what I thought we were going to do once one well. starts yeah, to go Dolly was like look I'm here no, right. like, I'm here and Mrs. we're here to do this I've got five minutes to get through because I was thinking right okay cool if you had like some stuff and you can maybe like set a little trail between each of them so you do it and yeah. it spreads That's not our style. and then it like forms <laughs> and then when I that happened it was just like oh shit <laughs> okay here we go yeah and I think I wasn't expecting you so initiative was only ever going to be called when the first when the match first, was lit first match was lit yeah and yeah was. yeah that was a very good dice tower that you Thank made you. <laughs> <laughs> for those at home listening to the podcast it was a really good dice tower <laughs> Um, I think I got really fucked at the beginning because it was, you know, we mentioned it was so dark and Calmers couldn't see, and I was like, "Well, I'm essentially useless." So you are like, <coughs> you're like, do I want to do something clever? Do I want to try and investigate? You're like, I can't see anything. Mm. Like, there's not, like, there's nowhere to go. And, and like, a, lack of, a lack of dark vision is an absolute <laughs> yeah. Shit at so like, and like right. again, uh, numbers wise, stealth. Actually, it, I'm not that bad. I have a plus two in dex, which gives me a plus two in stealth. So it's not. Absolutely heinous, mm. but I just think character-wise, it's that's just she doesn't want to be stealthy. That's just not. You're a daytime girl. Yeah. <laughs> One of my favourite moments from the whole episode is when Hilda running up and going, "How long have you been here?" <laughs> and Delian basically going. 
pun. <laughs> I, that's, that is... Sorry, what? Um, Shall we <laughs> I the me, not the character. Uh, uh, that is when we were talking about hating improv. That's why. Right, that okay. My mind went fucking blank. Yeah. Sorry, everyone. I'm now the Whispering Angel. My mind went fucking blank. And you've then got Chops next to you. just had the best episode imaginable for improv, right? Oh, yeah. We had all the Vim stuff. Everything. Oh, my God. It we'll was, get to that. It was, we'll get to it it was stunning. It was Every, so everything so was stunning from you today. It was top, it was top so work good. today from so Radio. Good. Enough about don't deflect. Well, yeah, um, no, but no, your, your mind I also went think blank. It's, yeah, I, that's that's I, I didn't know what to do. That's a tricky thing to handle it'll be interesting to I need to go and obviously have a think about how Brynhilde feels about this because she's still mm. under suggestion um, you're welcome um, but because my I, usual I, I, option would have been to fight but oh, I yeah, like yeah, yeah. Gronoff Which, and I like so therefore I, I wouldn't don't want, want to, to, to don't want to try and kill her and also like, it is Gronoff's gut like I just wouldn't want to start that fight but no. then and Dalian wouldn't know what to do then otherwise I only yeah, yeah that, I, I just panicked because I, this is someone I actually don't want to hurt yeah. that little halfling we found in the forest trying to run off Oh, the dwarf. Yeah, not the dwarf. Is it a dwarf? Yeah, it was a dwarf. Yeah, I just knotted an arrow and it was like, yeah, fine. Yeah. A misadventure, you know? Yeah, yeah. seriously. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, but Brynhilde, yeah, I mean, you're but not you're, Brynhilde. But this is the thing about the web in general. This is the, and this is what's really fun about you guys playing members of the web. If the web was an organization that you weren't part of, but you knew about and were like fighting against, it would be very easy to assume that everyone in the web is a cold blooded killer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're not. They're just people who needed something that they couldn't do by themselves and are now trying to work off that debt. Mm. And so the fact that just because you're in the web doesn't mean you're you're not all like... I'm trying to think who you've met who's in the web who actually is a real... Mede Medea, Medea is the only person mm. yeah. you've met who is like a, a genuine cold-blooded yeah. psychopath. Um, everyone else is like... Whether it's Morgan or Casper or... I mean... How are you guys feeling about the web as an institution at the moment? It's a means to an end, <clears throat> as far as I think Indelian's concerned. It's just like, I, I, I made a deal, I'm not stupid, I know that the deal has to be fulfilled. Like, I can make a quit, but at the end of the day, if you tell me to burn houses down, I guess I'm going to go burn houses down. Mm. I just have to get out. Yeah. Like, I have to do whatever you're asking of me in exchange for what you gave me. Yeah. That's the deal. So it's completely black and white, it's contractual. Yeah. So, all right, I guess I'm burning houses down. But I, I guess if Brynhilda had probably pulled the sword on me, I probably would have pulled my sword back and just said the web is wide and prepared to fight. Because that's what I'm here to do. At the end of the day, I think the spider prince will kill me before she does if I don't do what I'm told. Mm. So there you go. That, yeah. and then that, but then that's that kind of black and white for Indelian, which yeah, is... Yeah. I might have only got one way out of this, and it's I have to I have to finish paying the time price. Yeah. Speaking of the spider prince, I'm so intrigued by what that little pouch would have been. I know, me too. The little silver pouch. Because really, then it was when we were honest with him, and he put it away, and I'm like, what is that thing in there that? You know, I, I'm gonna have to use a Her Disney's Hercules reference because I don't know how Please. else to explain this. But everyone knows about the the, the Greek fates, right? And they yeah. have the the fate. Right. You have yeah. the thread of the fates, and to me, it sort of symbolised that. It was like, there's something there that if like. If I don't know if we hadn't told the truth or we hadn't done something, there's something in that bag that would have essentially been the end of us. Yeah, but then also something about it for me felt kind of deck of many friends esque. This little bag. Do you know what I mean? There's something <laughs> from the, the bag. bag, but just like this sort of I don't know, some <coughs> sort of are we looking at something that's sort of like a deeper connection? Like what is this thing that you keep carrying around? It keeps coming back to you, and then. Now we're in the web, and there's this powerful figure who has a little like sort of pouch thing that he pulls out, and I don't know, I just oh, yeah, speculation. Oh, Is anyone else thinking like pure tryptophobia with his mask? As oh well? yeah, 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 like, yeah. Just Do you know what like I was seeing in my head? And, yeah. Have you seen the Invisible Man, the most recent one, um, which came out in like 2018 or something, um, with Elizabeth Moss? Moss, yeah, um, and basically. It, if you look it up, anyone at home look it up and you see what I mean, it's like he wears this suit which has multiple cameras and projectors and it's just loads of little dots sort of, mm -hmm. I was seeing exactly that, that kind of trisphobia, yeah. If you want to know how different we are as people, um, Red Bull used to put a uh, camouflage type um, livery on their testing for their Formula One car that would be so distracting to photographers you wouldn't be able to see the changes they've made to the outer engine or to the outer shell of the car. And it's that same thing. The mm. idea is it's such a pattern when you look at it you can't actually tell mm. what you're looking at. Um, you went for film, I went for formula. <laughs> <laughs>
But you're right, I had an amazing episode. I did so <gasps> yes, well. Did. Yes, you did. So well. Um, I, to kind of... Um, I, I love playing a wizard because there are just so many options. Yeah. I feel like in situations like this, he can do so much. Yeah. And I, I'm... This is not a great... Like, the fight with the group in the forest, um, that's that's good in Delian territory. Yeah. It's a fight. There are people in front of you. Yeah. Um, this is this is really tricky. This is hard for Mrs. Stealth, mm. and it's in pitch black. I don't belong yeah. in this scenario. Whereas this is wizard, druid, rogue to an extent. You know, this is like, this is perfect stuff. Particularly Circle of Wildfire. I mean, I think that makes oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Sorry, we were, we, 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 but we were talking about how great that is. No, was. no, no. It's, it's actually made me realize there are certain uh, cantrips that I'd like to take now as well, just based on the way that kind of um, he's playing. So there's certain things I go, okay, these, are, these would be useful to have in my arsenal further down the line, depending on how he kind of seems to be acting in certain instances. Yeah. Um, and so that's interesting. I won't say what they are, but like they're informing me. I kind of go, okay, I think this is what he'd probably take at the next level or... Um, yeah, yeah. Which would be useful to him. Um, but yeah, it's... I Obviously, the interaction with Vim was fun. <laughs> it um, was inspiring. Yeah, it will. It was fun. <laughs> uh <laughs> but I didn't expect, but again, it was completely lucky because of the roll, right? It's the it's the roll of the yes. nat 20. Or the roll yeah, of the but 20. It's, it is where you go with it. Like, you could yeah. have rolled an at 20 and still wouldn't have had the interaction that Did we you all... Did you 20 it? No, I think it was a nat 20. It was, like, like, it was a 20 in general. Yeah. It was like, yeah. but, you could, but even if you'd had a yeah. 26, yeah. It, it then comes down to you being able to go back and forth with yeah. the DMPC or whatever, you know. Have I told it, you this theory that we handle charisma checks wrong? Have I said this before? So I, I, I learned to do, I learned to play D and D by by watching by listening to none other D and D podcaster by watching a guy on YouTube called Matt Colville, and he he has this series called Running the Game, which if anyone wants to DM, is a brilliant brilliant series to teach you how to DM, um, and he has like an encyclopedic knowledge of any, of everything, but he also has a couple of really cool things that he lives by. One one is if your players had fun, you had fun. So serve your table, don't serve the idea of the game. Mm. Um, which I try to do. Um, which you do really um, well. Which I hope yeah. you do yeah. really, really well. Um, yeah. And also, um, don't um, don't tell every, don't tell anyone they're having fun wrong. Which I really like as a, mm. as, a, as a thing. But specifically to this, he says that we handle charisma checks backwards. So, for example, if I say, if you say, I want to try and climb a wall, uh, I go, okay, roll me an athletics check, and then we narrate how it goes based on success or failure. If you say, I want to. Um, Try it, you know. I say I, I might say, oh, roll me, roll me a history check, and you roll, and then I say, okay, so you remember, blah 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 blah, and this. Whereas with charisma, mm. you give a speech, and mm. then I ask you to roll a persuasion check, mm. then I ask you to roll your deception or performance, mm. and there's no other real way of doing it, because I think otherwise you get into very meta, you know, like. But occasionally I've found in home games if I've played a character that's trying to kind of persuade, and you give what especially because it's like our job. You know, you give a speech off the top of your head that you're like, that's a good speech, and then you roll a two. And it turns out that was a bad speech. Mm. You know, and that yeah. can be really disheartening. And in, the se- and, in, and in the same way, you can roll a 20, you know, like, in a way, it's a great thing because it means that even if you, the player, aren't a natural role player, your character still can be, mm. and it's very liberating. Because otherwise, you could only get really good talkers being bots. It's oh. also the same as like with any other check, where environmental factors can come into play if there's a if there's a need to explain why something went badly. Like you know, if you're saying like, oh, there was there was a sign on the wind, which meant like you know some of your words didn't carry yeah. forward or something like that. Yeah, I think that, uh, similar to that. I was thinking that it actually makes sense doing it <coughs> backwards in a way because it's not just the words that a person says, it's how they say them and how they're received yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that dictates whether something is successful. That's a nice way of thinking about it, actually, that a charisma check is on the receiver, not on the mm-hmm. initiator. Mm-hmm. But also I think our friendship around the table helps, right? Because we, mm. we are getting to know each other, and I think it's probably obvious to people at home now, we spend a lot of time together, yeah. like an yeah. awful lot yeah. of time together or talking with each other. 
And you will know who's got the strengths and weaknesses of that level of improv around the table. So you will know that, look, you know, someone like, for me, I'm not ever going to be able to get to that kind of level. I'm enjoying it and I'm learning it. I don't know. I don't know. Not what we witnessed. Not what we witnessed today. Like, I don't think you take it so damn hard. I don't know an idea. Well, you don't know Ben. Maybe we're not that good of friends because that's exactly where it was going to go. Um, I thought it was great that Adelian I, didn't know what to say because, yeah. uh, because yeah, yeah. it was like you know, but then that's what I mean but then that's that kind of you get to know someone yeah. so yeah. you will understand as well like I, I'm still getting comfortable with all of this we've both said mm. the improv stuff it, it, so this idea make, that I could not fail charisma but I could still roll well but you understand yeah. that I yeah. might not be able to give the best speech ever because I'm just that's I'm not comfortable but it was that very background. clear that it was <laughs> Indellian feeling yeah. that not Hollis yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no yeah, yeah. I know no I know but the two but the inevitably the two are intrinsically linked you're really upset for the people watching with, or listening to this at home Ben holds a wine glass like, like a, a sociopath yeah. Yeah. it's a horrible and I find it really upsetting no I don't do that I he do doesn't he does it to wind me up um, it's deeply unknown also no but I think I think you are a, a, wonderful improv. And secondly, the reason you feel like you struggle in that moment is your character had no context of what was going on. Yeah. You know, you would, I didn't you know like, what to do. Your character wouldn't have done that because yeah. your, you, you were in your mind assessing all of the things going, what does Indelian know? Nothing. And yeah. Delian doesn't know that Vim has been <clears throat> indicted. Mm-hmm. And Delian doesn't, and Delian's just trying to burn down a building and Brynhilda turns up. What would you know? And so actually, it felt very organic in that moment. And mm-hmm. even if you don't have anything to say, <laughs> there are always moments in TV yeah. shows and films where someone does something that sounds very unconvincing. But if the way the person receives it it's still possible to be charming with it and mm. possible to convince something of some something mm. and I think I th- I we all do think you're an amazing improviser mm. oh and this is getting an uncomfortable have, route now but we all know <laughs> you're going to have to stop it no sorry can we give Harry a compliment or can we give you for compliments okay I'll give I'll give I'll I'll say a thing about us as each one of us are going and have had moments where our mind goes blank mm-hmm. at the table, where we don't feel like mm-hmm. we're bringing something in a particular moment, mm-hmm. or we wanted it, wanted something mm-hmm. to go better or smoother, or our mind isn't working fast enough in that moment, and that just happens. But I don't think it really matters because we're all here to pick each other up, mm-hmm. and actually, yeah. as long as we're doing it in character, I don't think it really matters. You know, it's it would be very boring yeah. if we f- if we succeeded at everything we tried. But it's to a do. very comfortable mm. table yeah. to totally. be around while and you're and learning. And also, the table has. Yeah. I don't feel like the table's ever ground to a halt. No, never. Uh, no. I, I, I felt. I felt like I did do that today when I was trying to decide what to do in terms of wild shape or not or what what thing. Oh, right. Because in my head, I was doing the same thing you were doing. Yeah. In my head, I was going, what do I know and what I don't know as a character? What I, I mean, I know all this stuff. I know yeah. exactly what, what Indelian's been doing four houses yeah. up because I've, I've yeah. listened to it as Doug, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, but I, what do I know as a character? So what can I get away with? So yeah. you, know, what you can don't want to do nothing. No, you don't want to do nothing. Thing. But then you go, well, what can I I do. I don't know what I can do. It's, I think it's always in those moments. If it's helpful, you can always ask me, "What do I know?" You know, yeah. I, I, if you're, mm. if it's a question of how do I not meta game, how do mm. I not use this information? That's one thing. But if you're literally going, "I don't know what I know," then you can always ask me, and I will always help out in those moments. Yeah, because like I, I had thought about turning into a cat, um, but that was partly because I'd seen the cat, but I didn't know that it was eyes cat. <laughs> I just saw a cat. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, at least in that case, the internal logic would be, well, Kelness knows that there is at least a cat round here that's been seen before. Yeah. So it's a less conspicuous thing than being an adult dragon boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I do think there's that is maybe it's an interesting thing to look into is the... the um, that collision of ultimately we are we are playing a game of D&D because we want to have fun but this is for the purposes of entertainment mm. and plot and story so mm. it's weighing up us wanting to play as characters and then also wanting to further the plot as well mm. and understanding that there is a story to be told here and want to make it as interesting as possible mm-hmm. so having to kind of maybe figure out what we want to do as characters, what do our characters know, but then understanding that what's going to be an interesting dynamic, what's going to be an interesting collision of characters to create. Um, And it is tough because sometimes I'm making choices that I wouldn't necessarily think are necessarily good for plot, but I think are true to the character (coughs) in the same way you just, in combat in that scenario, we are so aware of what everything's happening but our characters aren't. Mm -hmm. And that is what you've described there is a really good thing. Where do we weigh that up? And as the thing goes on more and more, we're going to get in much greater higher stakes moments than that. Mm. And we're not. We're going to feel helpless 
to do it because our character isn't aware of what's going on. So yeah. we're going to have to go, would our character go and save that person even though we don't know that they're there? Are we going to create a serendipitous moment where they just happen to be moving in their direction and save yeah. them? Mm. I yeah, I mean, whole... I kind of let you get away with one of those, which was you running down and running into raiding when you went around mm -hmm. the side of that building. I don't know if that was conscious, but I thought it I thought it was semi-conscious. No, yeah, well, and, like, and I thought, yeah. well, you know. Yeah, I was like, if I'm going to run to the front, I'm going to run one or two ways. It's a 50-50. It and, and, and it makes sense not to run past the collapsed building that will probably take you in line, which might is more risky yeah. to take you in and line. And then also, because what I was saying was I ran round to the back right-hand corner of the building away, like so it was in between me and... Do you know what I mean? So I was just further away from Gronoth's house. So in my mind, when I went and I was looking at that window, yeah. it was the back, from my view, the back left, which would be between but three and it, four. It's an in interesting question. Does that make it more, un does it make it unfair? Are we cheating people in some way by doing no, it? Does no, it I, I don't think so, because actually, you know, honestly, it's up to me. It's not It's not up to, I know this is a, it's a tricky one because it's kind of not player, is it player agency or not player agency? But like, I am, I'm a story DM and a role play day DM and I'm an encounter builder. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not not a rules guy. I just don't know all the rules. I don't know the rules in an encyclopedic way, but also it's my job to keep things within realms that we're all comfortable with. Mm. And sometimes that's like about, um, sometimes that's about, uh, story things and material and like things that I wouldn't put in front of you guys because I you know know that it would upset one of you and sometimes that's how many things can you do in a round of combat and sometimes that's what do you know and what don't you know and it's kind of up to me and I and I trust that you're all not being ad, you know we're we're not an adversarial table mm -hmm. we're not a table of people that see it as and I think it's a huge mistake that that certain tables I've I've heard about have I've fortunately never played at a table like it where people are like, okay, we the players or me the player. Um, you know, it's the job of the players to beat the DM. It's the job mm. of the DM to beat the players. Mm -hmm. It's terrible. Um, terrible. I'm so that's here. really combative. Yeah, it is. Like, but, it I think, but, I think, but, I, but I also think also if, you know, you come from a, you come from a kind of video game background or, if, or a traditional board game background, you know, you might kind of go, yeah, but there's a winning and losing, and and that person on the other side of it is the, is the rules is represents the rules, and so I need to beat them, and I need to beat what they put in front of me, mm. um, and so it's part of my job, I guess, to sort of, in a way that isn't combative and in a way that isn't and kind of doesn't stomp on your creativity, going, actually, I don't think you know that yet, you know, mm. I don't think you know, mm. and that the my main one in that actually is other people telling people what to do. That's mm. one that I think is really easy to slip into, to be like, why don't you do this? And it's like, because you're not there to remind them mm. of that. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important. That it's you so get tempting. To, it's really yeah. tempting. And I think yeah. it's really important that you always get to play your own characters without any interference from from other, you know, from, from one another, which I think we're really good at doing. Um, but yeah, it's kind of up to me to sort of stop metagaming that would break the game. Yeah. But it's inevitable that things will, will happen, isn't it? it, it and <coughs> you can't have your eye on every ball in the no, game. No, I've missed and neither tons can of stuff. Any of us. Uh, one thing that happened today, and I, I, just, I decided not to mention it because I was like, well, it's, I, think, I don't think it's that important. But you had, you had um, turned yourself into looking like one of the guards who'd mm. been walking, one of the builders who'd been walking away. Brandon. Brandon, Brandon. Yeah, and then approached. And then approached yeah, uh, Brunhilde yeah, as, yeah. as yourself. But yeah, it, but I assumed I. This is the thing. Is like I by that point, and maybe this is just me admitting it. I in, as soon as Vim had gone, it. I just mm. I dropped it. That's what I assumed. As well. And I, I should have I should have mentioned. I that. assumed you'd dropped it yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, but I guess I could have been specific about it. Yeah. Um, I also think even if you dropped it midway through the conversation with Brunhilde, it wouldn't have necessarily. What, the um, disguised self? Yeah, also, I had a conversation with you. Like, e I'm, yeah, even if you dropped it midway through the conversation, I don't think it would have been an issue yeah. because she trusts you. Yeah. And, the, um, we, and we even said this week that... Uh, <laughs> don't trust um, me. Like, <laughs> I, oh, yeah, all to self, yeah, disguise all to self, self, disguise self. But we, I, I actively made the choice to kind of not bring it up because I think both of us subconsciously just agreed it would be fine. Yeah. We talked about it in that we had a little yeah. break and we were like, did, and we were both like, 
this we, is the vibe. Right? Yeah, we knew yeah, what yeah, it yeah. was, yeah. which was we because like, no. even though there was a level of physical contact, it was that Vin was so pissed that he wouldn't have yeah. noticed. So for the people at home who aren't familiar, we've talked before about kind of levels of spells that almost build on one another. So suggestion is mm-hmm. one. Um, there's kind of things that allow you to be charmed, and then there's suggestion, and then there's things like dominate person mm-hmm. and in the same way there's disguise self alter self seeming um, and disguise self which is what um, Radian currently has access to and uses is you can make yourself appear like another creature with the same basic you know organization of limbs um, but those changes don't hold up to physical inspection so if if a dragonborn were to cast it and then you to touch a dragonborn who's appearing to be an elf you would feel the scales of an elf or if you're making yourself thinner than you actually are, uh, appear thinner than you actually are, the person would feel your body before they l- could see themselves touching this thinner body. And so, whereas alter self, you actually do become that. Oh, okay, so that's, okay, um, so because it was disguised so self. So technically because it was disguised self, like, yeah, like your, your face wouldn't have felt like Brandon's face. But, <laughs> White or, girl I on the fly, and then it turns out you on the fly yeah. also, had gone, he's so drunk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <coughs> and it's a lot of big feelings for Vin. Yeah. And I don't think he's ready, you know, he, God, he, he, maybe he knew it was a lie, but he just wasn't he ready just to, yeah. to But, you know, I think I think situations like that, also it's it's more fun, yeah. you know. I mean, that whole thing was just, like, if you had to stop that to talk about whether or not you'd had, like, disguise self or alter self, yeah. I'd have been like, fun. no, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Right, he just let it go. <laughs> also because I initiated it. Vim initiated it, and he initiated, and I initiated it as a bit of a bit. And so it would have been a shame for me to be like, I'm going to do something that I know is kind of funny and lean into the silliness of this moment, and then break your spell. Yeah. Yeah. To me, that doesn't feel like good DMing. That no. feels like real you railroading. Can, like yeah. I'm just not going to let you. But then do that's this what you said. That's the opposite of like how you like to play. That would have been you been one of those rules DMs, and like yeah, that's, and that would have been a and complete change of pace. And also, anyway. there's nothing wrong with being a rules DM. Like like there's nothing wrong with not being a style. DM who is absolutely, and that's not the expectations of this table. Mm. And I think no. as a DM, the key thing is always like can you set the expectations for your table can you let people mm. know what what you know I think um, you've you've said this from very early it's like you want to give us the freedom to play and like it's like getting stuck with you said it really early on with you know the loading of the the mm-hmm, bolt mm-hmm. if you want to do that and make it look cool I don't care yeah. and I kind of feel like sometimes we take that into well hopefully we do we take it into all aspects yeah. of what we do the role players are going this is cool this is a wonderful moment let it play out it's fun it created you know great stuff for the story and yeah mm-hmm. well the rolling we do as well like I, I I'm sure you know this is what action surge is for but you know there are <coughs> a couple of people that are like you know oh you guys roll a lot and it's like yeah actually and, and what it's doing is creating like a dot to dot that gives us it gives someone like me especially because I'm so new a structure to understand yeah. what you're what we're trying to do if I had total freedom yeah I would freeze yeah because it's t- it, it literally it's too much freedom. And the rolling for things, mm. initiative, persuasion, it things perception. Yeah. It allows me to understand where, where we're I going. Stand, yeah. yeah. It's, and that thing, I mean, there are certain people, you know, so Worlds Beyond Number, for example, anyone who's listened to that, they really don't roll. I mean, sometimes they will barely roll, but they are unbelievably experienced players yeah. and they're all really happy and that's the expectations of their table. Um, I don't want to be like that. Like, that doesn't... Yeah. And I know if, if people are watching this and they're like, oh, you know, I really can't stand all the... I'm like, I'm, I, well, you're going to need it because mm. there are some players around this table that need that structure yeah. in order for us to I keep things going. I love the rolling because I mean, it, it, it's what you it build your characters for yeah. as well. I mean, yeah. like, rolling... I think rolling... It's fun. It's mm-hmm. fun to... And of course, it's sometimes frustrating when you get caught in those ruts where you just can't roll higher than a six. <laughs> it's a horrible, Honey. horrible feeling when it... And, it, and, it, and it's weird. It's like... Um, it's like how sometimes, you know, I've never been, I've never gone to a casino, but that feeling of like I can't lose, I can't lose, and there are de- and there are whole sessions where you're just rolling and rolling, and everything that you're vi- envisioning mm. happens, and you have those as a DM as well, yeah. you know that you're like, that for me, there's always kind of things that I would really love to happen, and things that I'm kind of hoping don't happen, and some and sometimes you just go well. The way I look at it, though, is nothing's ever a failure. It's just you're just having to roll with with literally what the dice are telling you, yeah. and that's the fun of it for me. It's like yeah. you can't you can't succeed all the time. You mm. have to just and it throws in it throws in fate or yeah. or chance, yeah. you know, yeah. so that so that you know you. If I was able to hide all the time mm. and yeah. no one ever saw, mm. and he just yeah. like he was just like this whisper yeah. on the wind, 
where's the fun in that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole thing becomes a fan fiction at that point. Like it stops having any reality to it and you're just a mm. badass all of the time yeah. without any consequence. And actually, it's cute for a while, but that's not it's got any legs. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's really got nothing on the long term and, and that's, you know, that's what it needs. And actually, it's when we're not rolling well is actually what I'm probably learning the most about yeah. character development. Fun, honestly. Yeah, it's, it's a bit like life, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, it's, no one figures out if they're good at sailing on a calm sea. It's when a storm blows I in. think most of the most interesting character pieces that have come out of this have come out of failed saves. I would say you rolling that ones in session 0.5 um, to try and stumble into the room. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Live on yeah. stage. Like, I, I, I remember those moments. I think they're more character building mm-hmm. than successes because they, they show humanity, they show failure in a more interesting way. Mm. And otherwise, yeah, you're right. No one was 99 stats on everything. It's just really stupid. Yeah. Uh, also, to, to, to bring back to what we had, you guys met the Spider Prince. Mm. Mm. What did you, how did you find that? What well, did you like, think? It's still a bit of me, which is like, did we? There's still oh. a bit of a, oh. it's like, did we? Did we then? Or if we even if we did, is there even a spider prince? Is there even one spider prince? Is a spider prince just something of them? Is it just a, a, a It's like, the real spider prince yeah. inside us all along? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's the spider prince we made along the way. <laughs> <laughs> Would the real spider pl- prince please stand exactly. up? Exactly. Yeah. But you know, I mean, we, we, we don't know. The whole thing well is built, built upon deception. Oh, good. Very yeah, well yeah. Up. He was, I we definitely felt the tension in that room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were yeah. on your best behavior, we with were. the exception of one little <clears throat> quip. I don't think I was the quip kind of, was that quippy. It no, was no, true. It wasn't. It wasn't. I mean, it wasn't a. a I was a, surprised by the reaction because I didn't think it was that much of a. It was just Wait, a. Which one was it? I, I said something like, well, the, the last, last mission. Was like, oh, yeah, that one, that one. Okay, yeah. And I was like, but it's true. Like, you. Still. Yeah, I didn't think it was that quick. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. But I mean, also, sometimes I just want fun shit to happen. <laughs> also, so we've now had a moment from two of our characters, <laughs> and we almost had one from a third, but for a, 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 a low persuasion. <laughs> which, Even which, this smile which, is amazing which, right now which, if you're on the uh, podcast. Which, yeah, and these are moments when I ask the rest of you to leave, and one character has a, has a private conversation. Now, the other time we did this was... Really, we did a little, very brief one in Ep 5, but we did mm. a proper one in Ep 6, and we've now had a proper one in Ep 7. Uh, at the point of us sitting down to play, Episode 5 is not out, and certainly Episode 6 is a long way from out. Do What do you guys feel about desire, temptation? What are you guys going to do about watching those? Um, they I, listening? Yeah, like we're doing a refresher, listening to refreshers before, uh, before playing. I skip Skip yeah. it. Didn't listen. Skip it. Yeah, I have to do the glossary, so we'll have to have a conversation separately if there's mm-hmm. anything for the glossary and what you discussed. Otherwise, I'll have to get timestamps from uh, the editor, probably Seb, yeah. the, whoever's editing this, to just be like, you have to skip. Mm-hmm. But then also, if I tend to do the glossaries based off the raw file, so there's been no chopped out, so you'll be, uh, I will hear you go, guys, you need to leave the room. Yeah. And if I sort of know what I've got to skip, it, it's yeah. relatively easy. But then this is where it gets difficult. And we had this actually prior to launch, right? Right. We'd be trying to make stuff together, but you'd need me on CC on emails in order to progress stuff. It was when I was designing the deck. But potentially I was going to see and and read stuff. I shouldn't be. Mm. Um, So you are having to kind of, in good faith, yeah. Assume that I will skip. We'd only be, we don't, like, what would be the point, you know? Like, the way I see it is, like, it would just be ruining stuff for ourselves, yeah. ruining the play, mm. ruining the emotion. Mm. Like, there's no temptation for me to go back over and listen to what's happened because we'll find out when we need to find but out. But my worries is the spoiler chat, like in Discord. I'm, pre- I'm pretty active in Discord yeah. In, yeah. in terms of daily. Well, you never know. It might and catch up and you, we, the information yeah. might be able to. Yeah, it's yeah. just yeah. clicking the spoiler yeah. things and then reading yeah. it and you're like, oh, damn. That is weird that we're, we're going to be in a position where the audience actually no, know no, all of us about things. Yeah. We're going to have people who are like, just so you know, this has actually happened and this person is going to betray you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we're, the, the that, that to me that was very, that to me was a, an interaction that could have gone lots of different ways, mm. the spider prints and the spin. Um, and there were so many kind of, actually you got through it really, cl- like super clean. And I didn't know whether you would, but it was very kind of, that, that if you watch back, there's almost moments where I'm being like, oh my God, they're on, they're on their best behavior. Right? Behavior. Yeah, 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 a little bit. But you expect us to not. I, see, here's what happened. I can't remember what I asked you to roll. 
I asked you to roll history on whether or not you. So you asked. You, I think someone asked, "Had I met? Have That's I ever right. met?" No, I just asked, "Would we have heard any stories?" We've heard any stories. And oh, you yeah, you asked us to roll rolled, history. Yeah, you rolled yeah. high enough that you would have had. Like he knows when you're lying. Mm. To be like that, nineteen we twenty six like, or something. Yeah, yeah. and it was it was like, really it was really hard. It was or it was high enough that I was like, the, at the point at which you've asked someone to roll as a DM, you've got to. <clears> there's nothing worse than like. It's why you've, on those rare occasions when it's like, roll me a perception check and you're just in a room and you roll a nat 20, I'll try and give you advantage on another roll because, you know, good rolls are like, are what keep you going. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so without, without that knowledge that p- some people sort of say or there are rumours or whatever that he can tell when you're lying. We probably would have tried a bit harder. You would have tried. Do you think you might have tried to keep things from them? Or do you feel like, I mean, it's I an individual yeah. character. I, I, the character and the me. Um, <laughs> wouldn't. No, really? No fucking way. Yeah, yeah. Also, again, like, Morgan's just either. gone back and told him half of the crap anyway. I think the only thing Morgan wouldn't have known would have been the orbs, right? Yeah, the orbs were you. And the orbs were, yeah, and I think it was you who brought up mm-hmm. the orbs. Um, and it's the difference between a lie and a lie of omission, I guess. That mm-hmm. was the kind yeah. of, that's what you're all skating around. Mm-hmm. Um, but Morgan couldn't have told them about the orbs because no, he wasn't, wasn't there no. for that. Well, that's wasn't true. Yeah. So, so, so Morgan would know that the gods were dead, that themselves wasn't dead, that there's a blight, that Barabbas betrayed you. Yeah. What did you write down when I said I want Barabbas dead? No, you can't say. <laughs> <laughs> that she just wrote. I, well, I was right. I was. I was writing. It doesn't make any grammatical sense because I was panicking and trying to write quick and I wrote, kill Barabask, and then I put radiant desires too. (laughs) (laughs) But it it was just that because I just thought that was a kind of thing I don't want to forget. Yeah. Because I like that. And it's that's a lovely characterful thing to be like, I'll be the fucking guy to do that. Oh yeah. I'd quite like to be the guy to do Mm. that actually. It's almost like uh, mark his card for me. Yeah. Mm. When it comes, you'll get to drive the knife in yourself. He's a vengeful guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fun. Well, um, I think we need to have a roly roly. Roly Which means that I get to talk about my favourite part of the episode, and to no one's surprise, uh, I loved, I loved, I loved Vim and Brandon. Um, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, and I, what I, I'll tell you what else I really liked. I really liked that at the very beginning of the episode, because obviously I know where these episodes are going, and you've always got multiple stopping points as the DM. Uh, and I was like, oh, the, you know, if, if it works out like this, then this could happen and we could end with, you know, what we ended with. And also we're going to meet the spider prince and the spinner. And I knew they were going to ask to talk to Dolly and I knew that was going to change the dynamic in the room. And so you all started with like some fun and mm-hmm. some levity, even though Casper was in a really dramatic place. We started out with like burgers yeah, and, that's right. um, and a bit of silliness. And I was kind of really glad that happened because... A table that starts tense, I think, is kind of often unsustainable. Mm. Um, And so those moments where we were able to bring it out of tension at the beginning, have a little bit of fun and then get back into it and build the moment for the the spider prints, I thought that kind of worked very well. Mm. Alex Jordan? 88. 88. Holly Bennett? Very close. 86. Mm. Doug Cockle? 76. Mm. Eva Wilson. Oh, he's got a smirk. 125. Whoa! Go on then, go, go, go. Oh, no, mine's, mine's really close to Doug's. It's 75. Oh. The only person breaking three figs today is the high queen of DMV herself. Three figs herself. begin. <laughs> Uh, so add that to the running total, guys. The spooky queen. <laughs> the spooky queen. Oh, well, there's nothing spooky about her. Oh, I don't know, girl. Today was pretty <laughs> spooky. spooky. Um, thank you very much for joining us uh, for this episode of Action Surge. Yeah. If you waited a week for it, remember next time you don't have to. Um, if you are already supporting us on Patreon, and you got it straight away. Then we're very glad to have you. Thank, thank you, you for uh, thank you for being part of our journey for supporting everything that we do. Do please. Um, you know, likes on videos and, and all that sort of stuff. And also Comments. reviews on podcast platforms are really useful to yes. us. Join mm-hmm. our Discord. Um, come say hi. It's, it's a lovely fun. community. Um, and we will see you all. Do I always say the reliquiate thing at the end of every single yeah. one? Yeah, I like it. Yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah. I, I think well, people, people that, like familiarity. Yeah. Yeah. D&D, baby, shall we play some Dungeons and Dragons, Dragons and, and see you in the Go on, yeah. say yeah. the line. Oh, well, say the line. Do the, the thing. Do, do the thing. thing. Do the thing. I guess we'll see you all soon for more adventures in the world of reliquiate. Bye. 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 Bye.